Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll take a look at the first approach uh, in which we can enforce a specific output format uh, on the LLM. So um, for this, we have two functions that we're going to show in this video. They perform the exact same thing, but one of them is um, we are implementing it and the other one is Langchain actually doing it for, for us. So let's take a look at uh, both of them. So um, let's take a look at this. Here's the prompt. Provide a list of entities mentioned in the publication, entities either a model or a task. It's the same prompt that we used in uh, the previous video. And uh, we give it the publication, but the only difference this time is this piece of, uh, of instruction. Return a JSON object, and it's explaining how that JSON should look like. And then it's giving an example of, uh, of an answer. So yeah, really, this is the only difference between this function and the previous one is that this one contains this extra instruction. And then, yeah, we are saving the prompt and the response. So let's run this and see how the output looks like. OK, so again, it is the same prompt followed by the publication. And at the very end, we have this, uh, this piece of instruction. So uh, let's look at the response. And let me show it in, uh, in Markdown. Yeah, so here's the response. So the LLM gives you the JSON, JSON data, which is what we expected. And uh, it generates these things, these three backticks followed by JSON at the beginning and these three backticks at the end. Um, these are generated by the LLM, so I, I didn't tell it to, uh, to put this header here. So whenever you're parsing this, you might run into an error um, while programming because you probably don't expect this. So to solve this, you might add another, you, well, you either parse it this way, like expect that it's going to uh, be that way and you remove this manually, or you explicitly say to the LLM that it should, it should not return this thing, it should directly return uh, the JSON. Uh, I left this here on purpose to show you uh, some of the problems that you might run into uh, if you use this prompt engineering uh, technique. Uh, but yeah, you can see it works. It, get, it gave us the um, format that we wanted. So... Um, yeah, this is about the first function. Uh, for the second one, it's exactly the same, but Langchain is going to do it for us. So if you look at the prompt, again, it's the same prompt. Uh, we give it the publication, but we do have another key here in the prompt, which is called format instructions. So format instructions is the same as this part in the previous function. Like imagine this is the formatting instruction that we gave to the LLM, but this time we have it here as a placeholder and Langchain is going to um, write these instructions for us. We're not going to do it ourselves. So um, the way that works is you need to create an output parser object in Langchain, and there are a lot of uh, um, output parsers there. For this video, I'm using something called Pydantic output parser. And uh, to be able to use this, you have to create a Pydantic uh, class. So at the very top of my script, I created two classes. The first one is called entity. Basically, I'm defining what an entity is. So I'm saying that each entity has a type, and I'm giving it a description that the type of the entity is either a model or a task, and the entity has a name. And uh, here's another class called entities, which is just a list of uh, this entity class. So I want the response uh, that I get from the LLM to be a list of entities, right? So I'll be using uh, this class. So. Um, yeah, here I'm passing the entities class to the Pydantic output parser. And basically, this tells Langchain uh, how the output should look like. And yeah, I, I forgot to mention, these descriptions um, that I gave, these will be passed to the LLM. So the LLM sees what you write here. And uh, yeah, just put some effort into um, defining these things because uh, they influence the output of, of the model. So um, yeah. Now that you have the output parser, you can get the format instructions. And Langchain is going to give you something here, and we are going to inject uh, this thing in the prompt. So let's run this, and uh, let's see how the prompt looks like and how the output looks like. OK, so you can see uh, it's the same prompt, the entire publication. And yeah, at the end, you can see this part. So 
this is in the prompt. We didn't write it ourselves, but uh, Langchain put this for us. So it's basically giving it the instructions on how the output should look like. So it's exactly what we have done, uh, but right now Langchain is doing it instead of us. And yeah, let me show this in Markdown. So here's the output of the LLM before parsing. So it's, again, it looks exactly the same as uh, what we got last time with these headers, the JSON thing, and yeah, the backticks at the end. And Langchain expects that the LLM is going to uh, give you the response in this format, and they parse it uh, that way. So they expect that this is going to happen. And after they parse it, they basically give you a Python object. So at the end, uh, you do have a Python object containing all the uh, information that you need, and you can work with it uh, from here, which is, uh, it makes it very easy uh, to use. Um, yeah, so that's it for this video. Uh, we have taken a look at the first approach, which is just prompt engineering. There is no magic here. All you do is that you give it your uh, prompt and you add an, ex an extra instruction telling the LLM uh, how the output should, should look like. And uh, in the next video, we'll take a look at another approach, uh, which is different than this one. It's not going to be prompt engineering, and uh, we will highlight why it's more uh, powerful than, than this technique. So yeah, see you soon.